Powerlifting plateaus are one of the most discouraging things to happen in anyone's training career. And you keep wondering why it's happening to you even though you're training really hard. Well, to help you figure out what is most likely to be your reason for plateauing, I created this video to help you figure out what your reason most likely is and break through these plateaus. So make sure you watch to the end so you can see which factor is most likely going to apply to you. So let's go through six of the most common reasons you may be plateauing. First reason is you may need to go up a weight class. Now, this is likely going to apply to you if you are a novice or an intermediate powerlifter with a few years under your belt. As you get more experience, you will inevitably be building more muscle mass. And obviously, the more muscle mass you put on, the more weight you'll be gaining. Now, unfortunately, powerlifting is a sport with weight classes, so you need to consider the limit of each class. That may mean that if you are on the upper border of a class, that you may occasionally need to cut weight to make weight. Now, this may or may not negatively affect your performance up to a certain extent, depending on how you're cutting. So if you find yourself needing to cut more and more weight at every competition, and it keeps flatlining your competition total, even though you're making good progress in the off season, it may be time for you to go up a weight class. Now, in my experience, it's very common for people to be married to the weight class that they're currently training in. And people often use previous progress in a weight class to justify their belief in continued progress in the future in the same weight class. But this is a bit of a psychological trick. Now, if you want to find out more about which weight class is most likely going to be suitable for you long term, go check out this video here where I reveal the data on how tall some of the best powerlifters in the world are. So you can figure out based on your height, which weight class you're, you should probably move into. Now, moving on to the second reason you may be plateauing, you may have your training dose wrong. When I say training dose, I'm referring to the quantitative aspects of your training program. This means the combination of volume and intensity that's prescribed. Now, this can appear in several ways. It could be overtraining, it could be undertraining, or a poor combination of volume and intensity. Let me explain. Now, if you are overtraining, it simply means training at a level that is beyond the dose that you can even recover from. Now, this could be simply from too much average intensity, too much peak intensity, too much volume, or a combination of both. Now, telltale signs that this might be happening would be finding that your top end is crashing. So common telltale signs that this might be happening could be finding that your top end is crashing, your work capacity, and how quickly you fatigue across working sets gets worse. It could be feeling excessively sore, pain, or even strains occurring in some cases, which are examples of overuse injuries. However, if you are under training, which is sometimes less common, it's basically similar to training at a level that isn't eliciting much new progress. Quite often, if you are at this level, you would normally find training to be relatively manageable, but not always. Now, having poor combination of volume and intensity can appear in several ways. It could mean having a secondary day that is too hard and it's making you too fatigued for your primary day. It could be having too many reps concentrated around a specific intensity. So if you visualize percentage ranges at different zones, you may have too many reps around a very specific zone. Another example could be having a top set that is too fatiguing for your back offsets. Now, go check out this program analyzer that I created, which I link in the description box below, which you can use to check out different blocks of training and compare between blocks of training where you have been making progress and blocks of training where you haven't been. Now, all you need to do is to input data from a typical microcycle or training week, and it will spit out how many reps are spread across each zone, average and peak intensity, total sets, and total reps as well. Now, there are various other ways that a poor combination of volume and intensity could be plateauing you. If you want to see a whole video dedicated to this, comment in the box below. Now, let's check out the third reason you may be plateauing. You may be training consistently. If you are training inconsistently, you're basically partially completing a program. Now, this might look like missing out exercises or even whole sessions, taking more rest days than a program has given, or even overshooting or undershooting your RPEs. If you are someone who undershoots or overshoots, go check out this video here where I show you how to warm up to your RPEs correctly. If you are someone who often misses exercises out or frequently finds themselves adding rest days, then it's a case where you probably need to revise your training program so that it can fit into what you can do practically. Whether it's shortening the sessions, prioritizing the exercises or reducing the frequency of your training week. The training with skipping sessions or spreading the training week over more days is that you essentially reduce your training stimulus that you expose yourself to on a weekly basis. By the way, if you are finding these videos useful, please give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss out any more useful information in the future. Now back to topic. So the fourth reason you may be plateauing is that you may have poor externals. So externals refer to the aspects of your lifestyle that influence recovery, such as your external stressors, your nutrition, your sleep, etc. Now, if your external stresses go up, whether it's physical or psychological, or whether your nutrition and sleep have gone down, this impacts the capacity of what training that you can actually recover from. So this should definitely have an influence on the reduction of your training dose somehow. A lot of junior and university powerlifters that I've worked with in the past often find that they can't recover from what they usually can when they venture out into the work world. 
no surprises there. So if you do plateau from a change in lifestyle, you might not be able to completely bring about the same rate of gains, but at least you can do some damage control by managing the program difficulty. So let's consider the fifth possible reason why you're plateauing. Now, you may have too much specificity or insufficient accessory exercises and variations. So the specificity principle basically mean that our bodies will adapt in a very specific way depending on what we expose our bodies to. So in order to be able to get good at squat, bench or deadlift, it makes sense that we do squat, bench, deadlift in our training. But depending on our weaknesses, it may mean that the best thing for us to improve our squat, bench and deadlift might not actually be performing just a squat, bench and deadlift. It may actually mean choosing variations that help bias the stimulus on our weak points. For example, pause squats for a weak bottom end range of the squat. It's also worth thinking about our constituent prime movers of our power lifts. So thinking about the specific muscle groups that are responsible for each of these movements. Now, for us to bring about optimal muscle gain in these prime movers, it may not be just to do the squat, bench and deadlift. This is where accessory exercises can come to play, simply because there are so many other exercises out there that can mechanically optimize the hypertrophic response with each of these individual muscle groups than the main squat, bench and deadlift movements. Now, let's consider the sixth reason you may be plateauing. You may be plateauing from experiencing an interference effect. So this may be within your own powerlifting training or training that you're doing outside of powerlifting, if you're doing any. Sometimes you can see this if you get sudden spikes in squat strength or deadlift strength, and this can sometimes influence your recoverability for the other lift, and you need to accommodate for that. Now, if you are someone who trains with other training modalities or sports outside of powerlifting, this can influence how much progress that you can make in powerlifting. These other training modalities, especially if you are pushing them, can steal from what is called your adaptive reserve. Your adaptive reserve is essentially your inventory of resources within your body to create new fitness adaptations. So what's the solution for managing the interface? Interference effects from other training modalities. In strength and condition research, when there are athletes that do concurrent training, where you are training with multiple modalities, there, there is something called a session RPE, which is a way of monitoring training stress from various training modalities. And it's super simple. You can rate a training session with an RPE rating and multiply that by the duration of the session and you get your session RPE rating. And you can plot your session RPEs from all of your training sessions from across different modalities and manage the spikes in training load and training stress so that you're at least able to manage uh, training fatigue and help you recover from your powerlifting training. Now, this may actually help you if you have been plateauing from training beyond the dose that you can recover from, or if you have no idea how much training you're actually doing. Now, I'll make another video on this topic another time. So there we have it, six reasons why you may be plateauing. Do you think I've missed out any other factors? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you guys on the next one.